Okay, so I guess I can just preface this that so uh, Tuv obviously reached out to you um, on my behalf because there were so many people that messaged me and wrote comments on TikTok, uh, YouTube Shorts, etc. about like the podcast thing um, that you had last week. Uh, so it was mostly just about that. It's about the comments made in there. Um, also, I tried to find the exact clips that you were referencing um, in the podcast uh, and we couldn't find exactly what you said. We found things that I think were similar, um, at least based on the context that was discussed in the podcast. So <clears throat> obviously this is pretty short notice. It's short notice for you too. For anyone watching this, uh, this is like really short notice uh, <laughs> get together. Um, I, I yeah. wrote gank. Yeah, it's an I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, there, there's like no, there's no prep uh, really on this, um, no. you know? So yeah. Well, uh, actually first thing um, I just want to say thank you for having mm -hmm. me on and and thank you um for organizing this and uh it's nice to finally talk i think it was our first time ever uh directly talking outside of maybe twitter i think yeah i, I don't know if we've ever even to, to be honest i don't think we've even ever interacted even on social media to be honest with you i've uh you know i've worked with people that you've worked before and people have referenced you and obviously you know you're a you know, a legend in the coaching scene. So, I mean, obviously I've, I've known of you, but yeah, it's really good to just finally meet formally. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've known of your existence, um, for a while. Like, I don't, I don't know if you saw my tweet, uh, earlier. I, I, I know that you're like one of the longer term standing public coaches in, in the space. Um, I wasn't sure how active you still are. Like, I, I mean, I saw the podcast and whatnot, but I don't, I don't really, uh, keep up with a lot of, non esports space no no i'm not yeah. saying that you're not esports space i just mean like you're not in the you're not actively on twitter every day posting no, stuff I'm engaging not in esports right right exactly <laughs> right so like um so th that that's sort of what i mean um and then I, I don't really keep up with websites i don't know if you have a website but i don't really keep up with websites because obviously the whole stuff with like uh skill capped and metify and and that's a whole other can of worms um yeah yeah so okay um so obviously we could talk about, we could just jump right into like what you discussed on the podcast, but I, I would rather just like rather give you the, I, I guess, opening on whatever you want to talk about um, yeah. that you were That's, talking about. I mean, there's actually two topics that I'd really want to talk about, but I, just, sure. I mean, this I think there's a lot of tangents that I want to go on with you and love to pick your brain and, and have a chat about, but there's two big ones. Sure. Number one, the first one is... 10 CS per minute as a concept sure. and the idea and the premise of 10 CS per minute. And the second one is actually Annie. I want to talk about Annie. Yeah, I heard, the, I heard the Annie thing too. I heard the Annie thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I've got okay. a lot of um, points about Annie. So so I guess where, where the, the big one to start would be 10 CS per minute. Um, so look, I'm going to start by riffing and then sure. wherever I'm wrong, wherever you think I, you feel like I've... Um, framed you poorly or inaccurately just let sure. me know um because i just i don't want to misinterpret what you said right but the gist of it from what i can understand and what i've seen both from your shorts i think you have a youtube short that i popped up on my youtube feed about um giving advice about aiming for 10 cs per minute and there was a response i believe to ludwig in response yep. to him not uh struggling in solo queue talking about 10 cs per minute now yes. I, I have the 10 cs uh tweet on screen uh Right. I don't, yeah. I'm not looking yeah. at your stream right now. Should, oh, sure, sure, sure. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, so, yeah, it's just the Ludwig, Ludwig tweet. Um, right. Because I thought that's what you were um, referencing in the podcast. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there was that. And then um, yeah, there was, a, I think you have a short somewhere about uh, responding to, I think maybe it was like a Patreon question or something. Sure. Um, about 10 cents a minute. And so I want to make it very clear. Start with mm -hmm. the premise. A premise, sorry. I'm not a jungle coach. So I, I, I'm primarily a mid lane coach. So I want to make that very clear um mm -hmm. but in the case of ludwig right i'm assuming that your big shtick in this regard is the insignificance and importance of efficiency be you know golden resources and efficiency because ultimately if you have a lot of gold and you can buy a lot of items and you're very strong that is a very good general framework for um improving in the lower elo brackets is that am i getting that right um well uh so all right uh kind of um but obviously like the the context of this tweet and also i think 
who I'm replying to. I think this all matters. Um, but I, yeah, I would agree yeah. with you. The yeah, efficiency, um, especially at lower MMR, uh, I, I have the belief that it should be treated as a single player game. Um, and that most practice and routine and approach to your own gameplay, refinement, etc. should all be treated as a single player game. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start with the, the Ludwig context. What t is what context do, do you think I need to know in context to that advice that you gave to Ludwig? So when I'm, I'm tweeting at Ludwig, this is a person who just started League recently. Uh, to my understanding, to my knowledge, right? He had like an instance where he played in some casual event, but this is his actual first rodeo with League. Um, so there's that. He's already gone from iron to bronze in a relatively short period of time. And also this is Ludwig. And what I mean by that is uh, as someone that has interacted with multiple different elite personalities in their respective fields, and I'm not talking about uh, mainstream fields like doctors, lawyers, you know, etc., um, rather esports personalities, etc., Ludwig is above what we would call like pro gamer level in one of the most difficult fields in the world, which is content creation and streaming. Um, and I think that he's displayed publicly that a lot of it is through his own volition and his own approach to things. It's not necessarily a team or an agency that is doing that. So when I'm writing the comment to Ludwig, one, I'm on Twitter, so it, it's obviously not going to be as fleshed out as a video or a one-on-one -on -one session with him, etc. I don't even know if he's going to see it or interact with it, right? Because of the amount of uh, stuff that he just gets every single day, um, his views, his impressions on everything, etc. And also him and I, I don't even know if he actually knows who I am. Um, so even if he sees my name in the list, he might not actually pause and read it. Um, now, obviously, the tweet gets traction, so he did respond to it, but... What I'm getting at is Ludwig is, uh, you know, if, if we talk about cross-domain expertise or cross-domain uh, dominance, um, he would be able to apply that because this is very similar fields. Because again, his goal is to get to platinum. That's his bet challenge. Um, so my, my whole thing would not be anything that has to do with Diamond Master, Grandmaster, you know, Challenger, Pro, etc. And he's essentially just trying to hit a certain rank. Um, what is the best way that he can obviously do that? And as someone that I believe is highly competent, and again, cross-domain expertise, he also displays every single day, especially in this field of work, uh, extreme deep knowledge of analogical reasoning. So with analogical reasoning, if I say what I said to Ludwig in the tweet, he would be able to work it backwards on what is required to chase after that. Obviously, you can't get 10 states per minute every single game. That that I don't think is implied through the tweet. But he would realize that this is generally a metric that one, Smurfs would probably be able to hit, even if he doesn't call them Smurfs, just higher level players. Um, and it, it's also a metric that can only actually be obtained if you're properly doing patience kiting, properly rooting, properly understanding jungle respawn timers, properly understanding recall timers, reset timers, etc. And the intent isn't that he actually hits 10 CS per minute. The intent is that all of those things that build into what is necessary to hit 10 CS per minute must be worked on in order to obtain it in the first place. And then obviously the tweet emphasizes treat it as a single player game. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot to touch on there. I mean, sure. I would argue, I'm just going to speak from my experiences as a coach. Sure. I've worked with a lot of elite individuals. So to be clear, I've coached literally thousands of people. Um, sure. I've done probably over the past four years, roughly about 8,000 reviews. Sure. Um, across all servers, all ELO brackets. And I've worked with elite individuals, both banking executives, lawyers, principals, sure. doctors. Um, and I've actually seen little to no correlation in terms of success in other endeavors and then in League of Legends, um, in my experience. Um, I've had people that are elite individuals in many other fields and uh, take, you know, if it wasn't for their, their experience or the time coaching, they would be predominantly stuck in a a significantly low elo bracket whether mm -hmm. it be silver or bronze for a long time potentially even years um so in my experience just being from, from who i've worked with i actually don't think that um you can even really make that claim now if that person were to have success in other specific esports titles let's say they were an ex starcraft player they were an ex um dota player um, counter-strike player whatever i could see that because i think that then you would have you know fine motor skills you would have the ability to um understand like, like i think the aspect of literally being a good quality gamer 
flows on massively to other games. I mean, you know, I mean, you've probably seen that with you, with you working with other pro level players upon other games. Like I saw right. one of your uh, videos with, is it Raynad, the StarCraft player? Uh, Rainer. Rainer, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, and I was gobsmacked by how good he was. Um, yeah. Mechanically. Yeah. I was just like, wow, that's just incredible. And, yeah. and so I think there is an element of that. So, so I would say I, I, I fundamentally disagree with that first aspect. Well, no, I think you misunderstood me. I, I, I said that I wasn't referencing lawyers, doctors, etc. I was referencing people specifically in the space of esports and jobs that... Does he, so does he work in esports? Does he? Well, I, Lud I Ludwig's background is a, as, a, as a Smash player. And right. yeah, so his background is as a Smash player originally. And he came up as a Smash player slash commentator. Um, and then obviously right. popped off on Twitch. Um but I, I also do think that people that work in content creation is different than someone who would work uh, in a traditional like white collar uh, type job. Um, and I say that because of how often uh, the industry and the algorithms and the processes and you know the environment Great. rapidly changes, right? Um, you have to be extremely adaptable to so many different things. And the amount that he takes on is essentially his CEO and everything else. Um, I don't think it's necessarily akin. So I think it's a combination of that. Plus, he does have a background in games. Right. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't know he was a pro gamer. I, cause I, I'm not overly aware of who Ludwig is. Um, okay. That I can. Yeah. So I, I, I agree sure. with half of that. Maybe I don't agree with the other half. I think that's sure. whatever. Okay. So then the other part. So, um, I'm 100% on board with you with what you said on the second half of your thing, which was uh, what matters if someone were to actually want to climb to platinum would be to break down the underlying skills that right. make up um, being efficient, right? As you said there, like jungle sequencing, what makes a good bank, a good gank and a bad gank, um, you know, a level of champion mastery, understanding your champ's identity and playing towards that, um, you know, knowing the camp respawn timers as a jungler, um etc cetera, etc cetera. but in my opinion 10 cs per minute as a as a term could literally be completely removed from that equation because realistically a jungler is not even going to get 10 cs per minute you don't even need to get 10 cs per minute to get to platinum um my True. take on it is that it's actually a, an overcomplication um of the game and and telling someone um to be more if you had to give advice in a tweet to someone, I think there is better quality pieces of advice that would actually set that person on track. Now, I agree with you that the medium of Twitter is completely useless. I mean, what are you really sure. going to say within a paragraph to someone on Twitter that they're probably sure. not even going to say that's going to actually meaningfully change their lead journey? Probably nothing. But, uh, uh, you know, in general, the concept of 10 CS per minute um, even though I think I get where you're coming from in terms of the underlying skills, that's not how it's actually taken on board from a lot of people that see that. And I'm going to, again, speak from my experience with clients. I've had sure. people that have been given that advice. Maybe they've copied, maybe it's coaches out there in the industry that have copied your advice and said, I've heard LS talk about the significance of 10 CS minute and they go ahead and say that to lower ELO clients or even any client for that matter. Sure. And the clients literally go backwards because they come in with the mindset of, oh, I got to get every CS. I, I, I got to focus on my farm. I got to, and they, well, as I see it more as a laner, they will tunnel vision on farm, completely neglect trading. They don't even understand the underlying mechanics to get 10 CS a minute. So they're essentially gaslighting themselves. And so you kind of get this very vicious cycle of holding themselves to a high standard that is essentially unachievable for the average player in the first place. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Um, okay. I, so my, my, my stance on that would be that th there's going to be people that can receive the information and interpret it and then utilize it. And there's going to be people that can receive the information and not utilize it, right? We see this actually in personal training and fitness, um, where a gym person or a physiology professor or nutritionist, etc., can say very layman's terms explanations that might not have all of the meat and substance of what is actually going on leading to a certain process or exercise or workout. And some people are able to see that, acknowledge who is saying it, and then maybe dig a little bit deeper into it. And thus, those people find success. Um, and then there's a lot of people that just see it and they don't find success because they need other types of tutelage or explanation given to them. Um, but I, 
I, I think that that's ultimately arguing about language and the message that is being conveyed, not actually with the substance of what is necessarily being said. Because the, the statement itself does contain all of those things. It's just not laid out as such. It's a very layman's way uh, of explaining it. But there's also nowhere in my tweet that says that you must always get 10 CS per minute. And I understand that, that that's how maybe it can be interpreted by some people, but I would suggest that, that that's a different problem if, if people interpret it that way or they don't read deeper into it. Um, also, I'm a person that doesn't like in incremental approach to things. Um, not that... Uh, and w w let me clarify what I mean by that. Um, what I mean by incremental approach is sort of like when you were saying that uh, they work backwards or they get stunlocked on certain types of things or they get, they get stuck on you know doing X, Y, and Z. Um, I would think that if that's happening, there's other things at play that cause them to get stunlocked or X, Y, and Z. And again, it goes back to they need a different type of education or tutelage or other things, which is why they end up in coaching. Um, but it doesn't inherently have to do with the initial statement that's being made. Um, so in, in that regard, I, I think it, it gets a little bit nuanced where we are still going to be talking about people that need coaching, require coaching, or they, they need the same exact message delivered to them differently. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I see where you're coming from. I mean, um, I mean, I think we're getting into the minutiae now, but like, I think that, sure. um, I, I hear you. No, I hear you. I, 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 whether again, and I think whether or not, look, I'll say my last, my last two cents on that is, sure. um, I hear you and and I get where you're coming from. I just still kind of think that um with the t just again from what I've seen and the way people interpret that, I I get it. Maybe there are some individuals that would read between the lines and be like, "All right, LS doesn't actually mean that I should get 10 CS a minute or that's right. not actually what I should be getting." And there will be some people like that, but there will be a lot of people that will take what you say very seriously and live by that and i think as a role model in the community like yourself you know a lot of people look up to you and really listen to what you say um even blindly um without the you know the actual context and the, and the details around it and can get themselves a little bit stuck so i hear sure. you um but yeah no, I, I, I get as, as a personal side bit something that I, I talked about on stream yesterday and i actually said that i would mention it um in regards to this right like um Obviously, I just did a uh, like personal health fitness journey type transformation over the last like three months. I went from twenty percent body fat to ten percent, um, and nice. I did all of that. Thank you, and I, I did all of that watching Renaissance Periodization on YouTube, binge watching a lot of videos, etc., and all this other type That's of stuff. Right. That guy is absolutely amazing, and um, in 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 that. You know, th there was this one point where he talks about, you know, X amount of pull-ups um, or being able to do X amount of X um, as like, you know, getting here is like really good. This is like, you know, elite and stuff. And when I first start out, obviously I can't do that many pull-ups. Um, and again, he's using different types of content. He has his videos, he has his shorts, he has his reels and like whatever. Um, but I do think that part of the thing is on the consumer where I recognize who this is. And I hear what he's saying in a short and it's like, well, how do I get up to 15 or like, how do I get up to, you know, X uh, on, on any exercise or like, what, what do I have to do to marginally increase load? Um, because yes, that is necessarily maybe the end goal, but what are the processes that get there? And I do that obviously on my own. Now that's a personal experience or like anecdotal, uh, you know, reference. Um, but I think that a lot of people are like that. Um, that can just take short form content, which is what it is, it's short form, right? Not longer form. Um, and then they can reverse engineer it or they can look at who's saying it and then search out or seek out other ways to hit that mentioned end goal um, in some capacity, right? And in doing so, you, you develop a lot of other skills almost along the way because of what is necessary to get to that point. I, I get it. I yeah. But I, you know, <clears throat> I'm gonna just play devil's advocate here, just sure. to, just so you can, because I, you know, I, I, I've also watched his content. I've I've learned a lot from him as well. But I'm, I'm gonna flip the flip the flip the switch here. Let's say, um, you saw a short from yeah. Renee's periodization, and it said, um, if you're new, uh, to the gym, you're struggling in the gym, you're new to the gym, 
you should be aiming for 20 strict body weight pull-ups. That's what you should be aiming for. Mm-hmm. That's what that if you want to if you want to get to the if you want to get that physique, you should be getting you should be doing 20 20 body weight uh body weight pull-ups um every time you do back day. And so you hear that and you're like, oh, okay, does this guy does he literally mean that I should go to the gym and I should get that? And if I don't get that, I'm just a piece of shit. Or should I like am I trying to read between the lines? Is that like like what does he actually mean? Now, a point that I'm trying to make is that the equivalent of what you're saying with the 10 CS per minute is you're setting some unrealistic expectation that no one is ever going to hit mm-hmm. and is not even getting remote, remotely getting it, getting it close to hit. And it doesn't literally even matter on their journey to platinum or diamond for that matter. Or, yeah, mm-hmm. diamond for that matter. And then, and then saying, oh, but you misread, you, you misunderstood what I meant. I didn't actually mean you should get 10 CS per minute. I just meant that you should be um clearing faster and blah 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 blah. so you see what i mean there's you're leaving a lot of you're leaving a lot up to interpretation from the viewer so what you'd be better off doing is not saying that at all and just just completely removing that 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 standard to get and get across the point in a in a, in a way that is less ambiguous that's my contention so okay the, so the, the reason that i don't think that or i i prefer to to write the unrealistic number, right? Uh, 10 CS per minute. Um, the, the reason that I think writing it is good is because it sets a goal. And I, um, what I mean by that is like, uh, there, there's a saying that if, if you want to uh, hit the sky, you aim for the stars. Um, because obviously, even if you don't hit the stars, you end up way past the sky. Uh, whereas if you hit the sky, as you get closer to the sky, and humans are like this, um, you know, just psychologically with any goal, the closer that they, ooh, oh my lord, sorry, the closer that they get to any goal, the more difficult the ending almost becomes in, in, in a lot of ways. And so if the goal is further out, then they will go further along the path than they would have otherwise gone had the goal not been as far out. Um, the 10 CS per minute thing uh, with this is a, a pretty good marker, I think, um, because yes, it it is a pretty unrealistic number. Uh, but also the the way the tweet is worded, it says focus on 10 CS per minute, um, which means like exactly that focus, not get it every single time. But focus would imply like what are the you know what are the things that you have to do to be able to get this number, um, and then how do you go about that? If I were to just tell someone on Twitter. Work on your patience kiting, work on your clears, work on this, work on that. They could, in theory, do all of that the same way that someone might count calories or the same way that someone might go to the gym. But are they actually working on, uh, you know, progressive overload? Are they, wa- are they working on, you know, two reps from failure? Are they working on, like, these types of things um, with, with another equal layman's term explanation rather than, like, can you eventually get to, to this point? Um, I think the problem with, you know, do you know, do the patience kiting, do this clearing, do this. What'll end up happening is, and I mean, I did experience this in coaching myself back when I was doing public coaching. People would then say that they worked on all those things, but it actually wasn't that efficient. And I think that the 10 CS per minute demands that it must be efficient. So if you're nowhere near 10 CS per minute, well, then you're actually not doing it that efficiently. And it, their OPGG or Deep Lowell or whatever website you want to use, the graph can be tracked that like, hey, you were initially at 4 CS per minute. You're trying to get to 10, but you're at 6.7. So you've improved in some degree. Now, there might be other stuff going on with them. Sure, but those are different questions. But there is still like some sort of like tracking going on. Whereas maybe if I just tell them to work on those things, they think that they're working on it and they only go from 4 to 4.5. Um, because they're not working on it as diligently as they would to try to hit that unattainable number. Yeah, may, yeah, may, maybe that maybe there is a client out there that that um that that happens with um. Sure. Again, like I, I think where where we don't see eye to eye here is that. Okay, so l- let me again play devil's advocate with the whole idea that if you set this goal of ten CS per minute and you know read for the stars and thing sure. you're assuming that the person wouldn't get overwhelmed in the process of doing so league of legends as you know is a very very hard game yeah. very very hard 
and like incredibly hard um and so hard in fact that most people don't even re most high elo players don't actually even respect the difficulty of the game and don't even realize how hard the game is now if we're talking strictly about the lower elo community again in this context we're talking about bronzes and let's say bronzes and silvers sure they really struggle they really, really, really struggle. The average person at Bronze Zero is really struggling, and they're completely lost. Mm -hmm. And um, they need very practical advice. They need literally. They, they they don't even know where to start. Oftentimes, and so, in my experience, again, it's if I, if I say something that is kind of general, like I want you to come in, and I don't want you. I want you to just not die. Right. Set some again. I just want you to just not die. Now, yeah, there are people out there that would resonate with that, and there are people out there that would be like, okay, I, I get, I get what you mean. I'm not going to die. I'm going to value my life, and that's going to, if I stay alive, it's going to give me more success and solid for you. But a better, again, a better piece of advice would be, I think, again for Ludwig, or it would be, you know what, make sure you're on your raptors on spawn when they respawn, or for Elena, um, make sure that you. Um, are constantly trying to time your your trades with last hits or make sure that you are conscious about when you're resetting or make sure that you're constantly warding and leaning or something like that now if they said i've already done that and i'm still not getting results then that just means that there's another thing in the chain that needs to be worked on because as you said when it comes to 10 cs a minute or being incredibly efficient right. there are a multitude <clears throat> of things that you need to do so it's just right. another one of those things. So let's say, again, talking back to the pull-ups example, if you wanted to get 20 strict pull-ups, well, rather than just saying get 20 strict pull-ups, where do I even start? What do I do? Do I, do, should I, should I start with the, in the assisted pull-up machine? If you try and get, try and go right. get 10 assisted pull-ups with blah, 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 and then start there. That yeah. is a much more pragmatic and practical thing that I think would help people. Um, but look, I, I hear you. I don't really think, <laughs> I think that, no, I know, I know, I know. We're, we're sort of in an impasse. And I don't think it really matters at the end of the right. day. This, this. One, one thing that just popped into my mind while, while you were speaking is uh, I, I think that my 10 CS per minute thing is, is more akin to telling someone to run a five minute mile. Right. Where, and what I mean by that is five minute mile is not like Olympian, I don't think, right? Off the top of my head. Uh, I, I don't think that's like Olympian Olympian speed. Uh, I could maybe Google. Yeah, I'm not a runner. I have no clue. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> what, what, what is Olympian speed mile run let me see um okay they can get under four minutes um okay so l l let's use like five and a half six minutes right it's not olympian um gotcha. but it's definitely like doable uh by like really in shape uh high school students um if i were to tell someone to to aim for five and a half mile and they're really far away from that the number that they get on their clock that they keep seeing it go down and everything that has to be worked on outside of that to lose weight, um, you know, increase their endurance, do all these other types of things, the number gives them something that keeps them in check endlessly. Yeah, I, I get that because in, your yeah. case, in this example, the yeah. metric is very clear, right? It's like, oh, I got to get six minutes and I got to get this mile under whatever six minutes. Yeah. In league... The CS metric has little to nothing to do with the actual pragmatic gameplay. That's my content. My point is sure. that whether, whether a jungler in a game, right, gets five <laughs> CS yeah. per minute or six CS per minute has right. no bearing, zero actually, I would contend, basically 1% on sure. how well they jungled in that game. So in the running example that, that you can't really compare because in running, it's like, it's, it's intuitive. We all know what you got to do to, you know, for the most part to right. run more effectively, you sure. got to just go out there and run, you know, and, and train and lose weight and eat healthy. Right. And sleep well right. and stretch in league. It's not that clear. It's not, they don't even know. Okay. I've got to get 10 years minute, 10 years minute. How do I even get there? What steps do I right. need to take? Okay. So. Okay, sure. Um, the, the so that would then circle back to my my belief that you treat it as a single player game because I agree with you um, that yes, ten CS per minute doesn't necessarily tell you that you are jungling correctly, right? If we have a challenger level game or a professional level game, um, it could be the absolute most correct thing, depending on what happened in the game, for the jungler to have four camps at three and a half minutes. Um, that could just be a, a, like a real thing. 
Um, well, but KPIs I, in league are a big problem in general. Like, right, right, right. There is very limited good quality KPIs in league. Yeah. This is one of the reasons league is hard. Sure. So in Ludwig's case, again, he's trying to hit platinum um, to win his bet. That, that's all that it is. And because I have the belief that League should be treated as a single-player game below certain MMR thresholds, etc., I think he's most likely to improve at a faster rate doing this and then also hit his bet um, by, by doing it like this, by making the game single-player. Yeah, I would, I would, I would just disagree. Okay, that's where I would disagree. I don't, I don't actually think saying League is a single player game in my mind has next to zero help, in my opinion as well. Um, okay, because, um, again, again, pra practically, if I load into a game and someone has told me League is a single player game, I'm just trying to empathize with Ludwig for a second. Sure. I would then maybe make the assumption that, okay, um, I guess he means that uh, a lot of the events are going to be random. Um, the people around me are NPCs, so I can't really predict what they're going to do. Um, I mm -hmm. need to just react to a series of random events, and I'm just going to sit here and continually clear my camps. Now, yes, I guess clearing camps is good, right? You can, I guess you can make that assumption, yeah. but... Nothing is really random in League of Legends. I mean, for example, right? You can pan your camera. You can look at a lane. League is a game of probability. You can look at that lane. And so I'm playing a Moomoo, Moo, and I look at this pan my camera. I, given where the wave state is, and given yeah. the HP values of these particular champions, this is either a, and given my knowledge of the enemy jungler, this is either a high percentage gank or a low percentage gank. Yep. And so, in the, in the case of a jungler, if I was to, again, I'm not a jungle coach, but if I were to if I were to try and get someone to platinum, what I would the, the advice I would give in the case of uh, let's say Lovely playing a Moo Moo would be okay. One very piece of important advice would be before going to a gank, pan your camera and assess the volatility of the look at the HP values. Are they low or are they high? Or even better, start off the game trying to have a rough awareness of where the enemy jungle started. Track the enemy jungler at a very baseline level. Um the, I mean, I could go on with very basic advice that would, in my opinion, drastically increase the likelihood that that person would get to, to, to platinum. And this is my, my main contention with this advice is that I think it's completely useless. And I mean, no, like, I don't mean that person. Sure, sure, sure. I think that is, it has absolutely no help, it would do nothing. Um, it, and if anything, overcomplicate their journey. What, so I guess I would just pause and ask why, why, so obviously looking, so I agree with you on panning to a lane and looking at uh, the probability chance that a gank would succeed. Um, I would disagree that if your laner pings assistance that you should listen to arbitrary silver, bronze, gold uh, players because everything's going to be arbitrary. Their, their assumption on what requires gank assistance or what is a gank is different than the individual player. So I can agree with you when you tell the jungler themselves to look at the lane and determine the probability. But I would never tell him to listen to his teammates' pings. He should do it on his own, which falls into yeah, my single player. Agree. So that falls into my single player belief. Well, well then, okay, well, yes, theoretically it's... Single player in this, you're okay. Well, what you're saying then is you're wanting you're wanting him to be accountable for all his own actions, but have yes, nothing like, to do with his teammates' input. Right. So you're assuming that everyone, no one knows ex what they're doing at all, and there's going to be absolutely zero interaction, and everything that they do is completely. Yeah. Okay. I, I get. I get. I get where you're coming from. It, it mm -hmm. but it literally didn't click for me until you just said that. I didn't. I actually had no idea what you meant by the statement. It's a single player game right up until that point. Okay. So okay. what you just said there yeah. makes total sense to me. Yes, I agree. You should not, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, a ping should literally just be a sign that something is happening there. Right, right, not, right, not, right. Not that you should listen to whatever they say. That, right. And when I say, when I perceive it to be a multiplayer game, I don't mean listen to other people's pings or even communicate for that matter. Okay. What I mean is there are other people in the game making decisions and you can assess that information and make a decision for yourself. So right, right, right. That okay. There are other people yeah. in the game, and that these events are happening around you, in which you need to interact with them, mm -hmm. is what I. That's the way I perceive it to be yeah. a multiplayer game. Because okay, okay. Because theoretically, it is a multiplayer game. 
Right, right. So sure, it's a multiplayer game. Right, right. My so again, I, I guess the, the the reason that I just use the language that I use though is because I want the person to be accountable uh, for all of their own actions without, you know, right. starting to ponder, uh, did I do something wrong in this top matchup? Did this but, top but laner? Why not just say that? Well, because why not the media say, take maximum responsibility for your decisions. Sure, sure, sure. But again, I think it goes back to the medium of these. These are shorts and Twitter and and whatever. This isn't longer form content. Um, the, the same way that like if we use the fitness analogy, right? Like Mike Isertal, he has long form content where he goes into the nitty gritty of certain workouts and other stuff, and then he has a short form content, and they're just meant to convey different things. Enough. Yeah, I I I get what you mean now. Yeah, I just think there's a lot of um. I don't think it's particularly clear as you think it is. That that would be okay. my, my my what I think. Well, also, well, also uh, the the demographic that I'm I'm trying to uh, appeal to, and I've always held this stance, um, and I think that you even mentioned it in like your podcast. Generally, when I talk about the game, usually it is just pro play in esports, um, for the most part. But yeah. generally, the audience or the consumer that I care about the most is the person who will further seek out information. I don't I don't care about the the I think I, I I could be wrong on this number. Um, I think that uh, ninety eight percent of people who attempt fitness stuff, like actual fitness, like weight loss and other stuff, fail. I think that's a number. I think it's ninety eight percent. Only two percent are really successful um, with like fitness, weight loss journeys that actually keep it off and like other stuff. Um, my content and most of what I say is about the two percent, um, and then caring about the people that will follow up on the information. Um, I stopped caring about the 98%, uh, or not that I stopped caring about the 98%, it, it's just never been my prerogative. Okay. If, if that makes sense. I, yeah. I, I respect it. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I respect okay. it. I mean, yeah, I think that's completely reasonable. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think let's move on to the Annie discussion. Sure, sure, sure. So, okay. um, correct me if I'm wrong. Could be, I could be wrong here. Your, yep. One of your pieces of advice is you, you tend to recommend people Annie, um, especially in the lower ELO brackets for yes. to, to their journey and to make it easier and simpler. Is that, is that right? Uh, it's not just because it's simpler. I think Annie has a really good fundamental baseline kit. She has high auto attack range, um, which requires spacing and then ability to utilize the auto attack range. She has a point and click ability, which is obviously good. She has resource management in both mana and her passive, which teaches like something going on there. Um, she has Tibbers, which then you have to control Tibbers with R. Um, so there's a little bit of added mechanic that you know you can get while playing Annie. Um, she has her shield and timing it. I, I just think that her kit is like a perfect vanilla card, uh, if I were to use like a TCG analogy to play the game with. But then also, I do think that her power level at low MMR, mid MMR, even pro play, I mean, Annie, Annie's still viable in pro play, um, it is just really strong. Um, and I think that her gameplay and, and most stuff is really straightforward with her. She's also a solo kill uh, mid laner. Like, she can find solo kills pretty often. And I think that that's a good metric that low MMR players, when they're trying to get better they're, they're, again it's like one of those metrics like can i track it are you consistently winning in cs are you still are you solo killing your opponent with a champion that can definitely solo kill um in lower mmr um so yeah i think there's a lot going on with annie that's it's good okay yeah i would yeah completely disagree um, okay, <laughs> I, I, okay. So, <laughs> yeah yeah go go so, yeah so um, I think Annie is probably up there with one of the worst mages you could play as a low elo player. Um, okay. Up there, uh, not to say she can't be effective if a smurf were to play her and not to say that you can't learn everything, all those things sure. you said with her. Annie is, in my opinion, actually a very complex champion. Um, and in a way that a lot of people don't understand. So, 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 okay, so there's one aspect of a kit that is very important that I mm -hmm. would consider, to be honest, to be the training wheels of mid lane, the training wheels of lane, specifically in mid, um, and that is wave clear. Nowadays, if you okay. don't have wave clear inside your kit, you're essentially playing the game on hard mode. 
And um, Annie really severely lacks wave clear. And for high elo players, the way you establish lane control, I played a fair bit of Annie myself. Sure. And I've versed a lot of uh, an Annie OTP in, in my server. He's actually really quite good. Um, 40 40. He's like an Annie OTP in O's for a long time. He's really quite mm -hmm. good. The best Annie players, as you know, leverage her high attack range. They posture up aggressively, right. abuse that attack range. They will even, they will go Scorch. Um, they will start E in a lot of major range matchups. Yep. They yep. will bait the enemy to trade onto them. Go get E, proc the, proc the Scorch. That was even when First Strike was great. You could proc yep. First Strike, basically yep. guaranteed. Um, and you would essentially establish lane control utilizing well, everything around your E and your auto attacks. It's actually yeah. very little to do with your Q and your W. It's all basically your E and your auto attacks. Yeah. Now that's a very unintuitive, complex aspect of League of Legends because it assumes number one, you're competent mechanically such that you can actually understand the ranges of champions and space and tether correctly and understanding minion aggro. Two, it understands or assumes that, that you understand what ability you should be using your E4 in a particular matchup. Yeah. Then you also, on top of that, you're kind of baited to use your abilities on the wave to, I, I guess, aid yourself with wave clear, but your mana cost is so high, it's unreasonable. And so you're only yeah. then, typically then, you're forced to uh, hold your, uh, your, your passive done to generate threat to create space and then use your auto attacks to only last hit so you, you even though your q gives you back mana you're not even really incentivized to use your q to last it because then you're losing your passive stacks you're not really ever using your w because it costs too much mana so then what actually happens in the lower elo brackets because the players can't specifically in bronze and silver they can't leverage the auto attack range the e is commonly misused and again not intuitive for the average player Therefore, your kit completely loses lane control. Your kit doesn't sure. have wave clear. And what, what often happens, and what I see, they get shoved in, they're getting poked under tower, they have to then use their abilities to last it, they, they, they uh, miss last hits, they mess their W, they go oom, they become overly reliant on using their R for lane control. And it, let's say the stars align, let's say the jungler ganks, or maybe the, the enemy miss tethers at six, they press their timbers, they get a solo kill. Quite often, even after that solo kill, the enemy comes back and TPs, their tippers is on cooldown, and they're like, oh, well, I, I guess I lose lane control right until, until my ultimate comes back up again. And so in, pra in, in practice, yeah. in actual reality, all of the major strengths of Annie's kit are, are basically unusable for the entirety of the lower elo community. And so you don't learn what it, you don't actually feel or have the chance to feel that lane control. And so therefore, because you don't get lane control, you don't actually ever get the opportunity to have dominance over the lane control the wave and actually plan your resets. You can't really get build the habits of warding and leaning. And um, you don't actually even have a great way to simplify your lanes because you're constantly getting shoved in and your mental sack is overwhelmed CSing under tower. So in practice, Annie does not is probably one of the worst champs you could play in the in in bronze and silver and iron so okay so i guess i would have a couple of gripes with this um so obviously i i think that there, there's two parts uh of this maybe uh or actually maybe there's a little bit more um i'm trying to think uh, well actually first let me start with what what do you think is a good mage then for a lower mmr player okay let's we've got to get specific if the one is level 30 and Iron, I would sure. argue that champions like Malzahar and Brand are very good because they simplify getting shove. They get you to not have your mental stack is less overwhelmed because you don't have to really overthink getting shove, sure. poking down the enemy. Poking down the enemy actually becomes significantly easier. Then I would transition if you're like maybe getting through Iron and getting into Bronze Mages like Vygar. Um, you know, could maybe be weaved in there a little bit. Um, still, Malzahar really great. Um, and then if you're getting through, you know, kind of um, through through bronze into silver, I would argue more traditional mages such as Victor um, would be much better for learning the fundamentals because you have wave clear, you have more obvious lane control, and the trading patterns are a lot more vanilla and clear cut and straightforward, and you're less okay. hard dependent. Okay, so you said uh, so you said brand Mal Malzar, or brand, brand for absolute beginners. I think they're okay. really really simplify okay. especially Malzahar. Yeah. Malzahar is and then, incredibly oh, Aesol in there as well. I think Aesol is also really good. Okay. Aesol is at, really good. at like super low MMR? 
Yeah, I would say okay. bronze ASOS is great. Okay. Um, okay. So working with this framework uh, and like some of the stuff that you said about Annie, um, I can see Malzahar um, because he's just abusive and that he presses EW and the wave goes away for the most part. Um, with Brand, you have to use his passive on the... You have to you have to Q the minion, then you have to E it, then you have to W. Um, and then also your W has to be able to hit all six minions uh, for you the most part. You don't have to Q the wave. You don't really need... You wouldn't really need to Q the wave, right? You would only well, to get to the... Ex Typically. Depending on how the, the, the wave is positioned, right? To get the expanded conflagrate... Is that the name of the ability, I think? Well, yeah. To, so typically, an, a very easy way to execute brand is actually Emacs. Um, and it actually simplifies your lane massively. You don't even have to... You can max E if you want to, or you can do three points W max E, or you can do three points yeah. E max W, either or. But Emacs specifically is a really, really... It's like the training wheels. It's a really, tra I guess, yeah, training wheels way of, of, of getting used okay. to playing a mage. Sure, okay. So for So one of the things that you said about Annie is that she has to use her abilities on the wave. But now Brand is having to use his abilities on the wave. Yes, but Annie's abilities um, have no AOE. Wait, the W, you don't max W. Your W is too expensive. And um, sure. whereas Malzahar and Brand have way more bang for buck value for using their abilities on the wave. And simultaneously, sure. using your abilities on the wave is actually going to, can sometimes even be proxy trade. It can right? bring them. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Exactly. And Brand sure. is massive, and et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think Annie wants to be using Q on the wave, though, to accumulate stun stacks in order yes, to but then... it doesn't really age your wave clear that much, right? Uh, well, I mean, because the... you're only usually last hitting with your Q. Right, right, right. You're, you're... <clears throat> right, you're, you're last hitting with your Q. So now we're talking about uh, push speed. Uh, so we're yes, talking clear. about Brand, Malzahar, uh, Annie push speed. Yes. Those champions would obviously have greater push speed, um, so you can push the wave, but then necessarily what do you do with it next um that like i think that is obviously something that follows um the other thing that for me is a lot of these suggestions are turning off a huge part of the game like when you were describing annie you were describing all these aspects that make you become a better player in order to get use out of her kit um you have to auto attack you have to space you have to know how to use her q and her w uh, because you can lay, you can lather up the minions to eventually just get killed by a W. Um, you know that's possible. Um, learning how to juggle her passive. So for me, I would rather a person not cheat the game because this goes back to something that we talked about in the previous segment about the incremental things. Um, my whole thing, even when I was coaching uh, years ago or current belief, is I, I don't believe in these types of things because I think that this encourages people to come back for the next step. This is like a, a business model that keeps the person endlessly returning. Um, whereas if they get stuck on Annie uh, for a while, but Annie has all these things that are clearly laid out that they should get better at, then they're forced to get better at them to ascend with Annie. Whereas, yes, with Brand, Malzahar, uh, Aesol, uh, was the other one that you listed, etc., they can cheat an entire aspect of the game. Um, and then there's another Let's aspect. Specific. I think sure. I, I don't think that's I don't think cheating is a is a is a um is a fair <laughs> word. What you're what we're purpose what, what we're really doing is we're simplifying certain aspects of the game so that we can allocate our mental stack to other areas and actually feel what it's like to play the game of League of Legends. Because because you're right in the saying that theoretically someone could play Annie and they could learn all of these concepts about the game and and they could be taught. In practice, in practice for the average bronze or iron player, that's not really how it plays out. In practice, how it plays out is they're just overwhelmed. It's like, I'm just CSing under my tower. They're, you're assuming that they're going to make that connection to, oh, I'm getting shoved in 24-7. I'm having to play dodgeball under my tower. Hmm, what's going on here? And then, so for example, a concept that, you, sure. that we think is relatively straightforward would be um, standing outside the wave posturing a little bit aggressively, putting pressure on the sure. opposition such that they're second guessing their ability to, to order the wave and press the wave. Now that concept, even though, you know, for the average higher level player is complete second nature and, and normal, it's actually not a very intuitive concept. If you're, if you're in, in, if you're loading into a game of League of Legends as sure. an average iron or bronze player, that's not intuitive whatsoever. Leveraging literally the clicking ability and spacing ability of the average iron and bronze player is not even remotely good enough to even leverage Annie's auto attack range. Now let's right. say, let's I say I said to that Annie player and we said, you know what? Hey man, you really need to 
be tighter with your clicking. You need you need to space this here, and 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 you need to um you need to really do that. Mm. And if that person does that. Their mental stack, they, they're in la la land immediately because they're they're focusing on something that is such a minutia, such a small detail that they they can't even comprehend how that fits in with the bigger picture of laning holistically. It's like, hey man, yeah, you got to space this guy and auto attacking, but 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 no, you got to order the minions now. But no, then you got to go back to order him, and then you got to weave in some of it. It's there's too much going on. So we so by the, my premise. And what I've seen that gets results is okay. Let's simplify this a little bit. Let's not worry about wave clear. Let's we can we we've got that inbuilt in our kit first. Let's actually feel what it's like to get a bit of shove, a bit of control, get some vision out. Maybe be a little bit aware of your jungler. Maybe move into that river first. Get to that dragon fight. Get to those scuttles. Fight a little bit. Feel what it's like to deal damage reliably at your way and be and actually attend fights and farm. Then we can tick all the boxes later on. Because realistically, the way I, I one of my my most uh, I would say important concepts that I recommend, and this is something that I've coined, I would say, is champion pool cycling. Someone should never play Malzaha for 150 games. Ideally, what I would recommend a client is okay, if you're in Iron, play 60 games of Malzaha, 70 games of Malzaha, feel it out, play around with it, you know, have fun with it. We can, you know, but what whatever. Then let's move on to something else. Let's move on to brand. Do that. Do same thing. 60, 70 games and get, get a bit of reps in there. Move on to ASOL. Let's just get maybe 60, 70 games in there. Over time, what we're simultaneously doing is A, feeling out multiple kits and feeling what works for you, what you find enjoyable. We're also getting you to view the game through different lenses so we can shift our perspective and understand the game through different lenses and understand how kits fundament fundamentally interact. But what you're actually doing is you're actually... Uh, uh, I would say artificially uh, creating a, a progressive overload and using your term in reference to the gym. What we're doing is we're slowly and incrementally increasing the difficulty of the game. Now in the gym, if we want to bench a hundred kilos, you don't just rack on a hundred kilos and say, you go, so let's, let's struggle onto the bench and try and lift a hundred kilos. And eventually if you keep struggling, you're going to get there. No, what do we do? Well, you start off with one plate or even a half a plate or 10 kilos on either side. And we, do 10 reps and then, you know, increase the rep, rep range and add on some more weight, drop it down. And we do that and we sure. go up and up and up and up. That's that's my, my, my contention. Annie is the equivalent of whipping on 100 kilos, struggling under the bar and say, hang in there, buddy. You, you'll get there, but you don't get there. And the reason I see that, I've, I've literally got clients that I've worked with that have never got there. They told me, I've got messages in my Discord saying someone, he was in uh, gold or uh, silver or something for like, five years playing Annie. They don't go anywhere because they're overwhelmed. They can't figure it out. Okay. So, so I mean, they are, no, sorry, no, 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 it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so again, when, when you say that you have experience, uh, getting results with your, uh, approach, obviously I had back when I was doing public coaching, um, and I had thousands of hours myself, obviously Annie had results. Um, also I'm a person that generally hates win rate data. Um, however, in this case, uh, Annie is one of the few champions in league at lower MMRs that consistently has really high win rates. Um, so there's that. The, the other thing, um, about like, uh, what you were saying for the, the players and incrementally like increasing, like what they're going to do in X, Y, and Z, yada, yada, yada. I feel like, again, it's appealing to the 98% and it circles back to, I just care about the 2%. Um, so it, like even in that regard with Annie, um, my assumption. Can we talk about stats for a second though, because that's sure. actually disingenuous. Annie in Iron has a, at the moment a forty-five percent win rate. What site are you it's using? Actually, this is Lolalytics. I just went on Lolalytics on the recent patch. Iron, forty-five point okay. seven six percent win rate. Rated one of the lowest win rate champions sure, sure, sure. in Iron. So on on UGG, uh, she has different win rates than that. Silver, she has fifty-one. Uh, in gold, she has 51.55, then 51.59. Uh, what? Oh, I'm talking iron. Right. We're talking about iron and bronze here, right? We're talking about beginners. In bronze, it's 50%, sure, sure, sure. so it's middle of the pack. And sure. in iron, it's 45. Gold is not bronze. Gold is completely me... different to bronze. Well, I also think iron, I, I mean, I have my own stance on iron, but... 
Yeah, bro bronze and bronze. I'm mostly referencing bronze, silver, and gold. Yeah, on UGG, she has positive win rate for all of them. Way. You can't, you can't. Bronze, silver, and gold are like not even in the same ballpark. Gold and bronze are like that's like saying, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the education system is in Korea, but like in Australia, it's like say like year twelve and year seven. It's like a six year difference. It's very bronze and gold are a different ball, a bit different ball game. Uh, I don't know if I'd agree that they're that different. Um, in terms of attainability, like within a, a small time frame, I think you can make a bronze player get gold very quick. But if you look at a bronze player and you look at a gold player, in terms of their gameplay, if we just showed a bronze. Sure. And a, an actual bronze and an actual gold. It's, it's scary how different they. Yeah, are. no, they, they, they're they're, that, they're different. They are completely not not that completely different. Yeah, I, I mean, but I I don't think it's that difficult to go from bronze to gold in a really short time frame. I think it's. I I wouldn't say it's. Yeah, look, it's obviously doable. People do it. I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't say it's like easy. It's a challenge, of course. But that's mm -hmm. all subjective, right? What we're getting into now is sure. subjective. There are some for some people it will be easy. Sure, sure, sure. Other people it won't be easy. Yeah. No, I I, I was just bringing up the the, the anything um, mostly because again those three uh, brackets. But again, I am someone that does not uh, particularly like win rate data um, because introduction of knowledge and everything else. Um, so for the go, I, it it sounds like to me it's circling back to the two percent and ninety eight percent thing that I talked about earlier. Um, where I would rather have someone be on Annie, struggle longer. And even the gym analogy, I don't, I don't think is totally accurate because obviously Annie, you're working on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, um, which would be like, uh, st st I don't know, stabilizing muscles. You'd have to build other types of muscles and do all this other type of stuff incrementally uh, just in different departments, right? You'd have to get good at spacing, tethering, auto attacking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then Annie demonstrably does have results, um, even if uh, we don't agree on how they're achieved. Um, like, I think the meme exists for a reason, right? Uh, and obviously back in my day of, and again, anecdotal experience, uh, doing all the coaching, I used to post all those screenshots and have like the OPGG reviews where someone would 50 games of Annie and they'd go up 600 LP or something. I, I think the game has changed a lot, by the way. I will say that even over my sure. four years of coaching, the game has changed a lot. I look at a bronze player now, yeah, and you look at a bronze player four years ago. It's yeah. very, very different. So I'm not going to discredit any of the results that you got in in your time before you were coaching. I don't doubt sure. that. I'm just saying now, Annie is not an efficient way to learn the game. It's it's too it's too complicated. There's the skills. There's too much going on to actually get success it's not to say you can't right but it's just not the most efficient way if anything probably one of the least efficient ways um to actually learn the fundamentals of the game if you want to learn the fundamentals of mid lane it's not really where you would want to start that's the... my contention okay i i guess my only problem with that would would just be is, is that that it sounds like a business model to me um, and what I mean by that is that it, it keeps the person endlessly returning um, because you put them on the wave clear champions, they learn to wave clear, they go to team fights, they don't actually understand what's happening in the team fight uh, because different teammates, different champions every game, different situations. Um, and they can, like, if we're talking about overload or we're talking about things that they can't possibly process on their own accord, um, that's not a single player. Well, I mean, it is a single player game. Um, but it, there, there's a lot more, I think, convoluted stuff happening there. Whereas if they're on Annie and their primary focus is on CS development, uh, solo kill potential, and these types of metrics and the type of things that you have to be good at on Annie in order to do those things, it gives a much more streamlined idea of why you're failing or what you're not doing good. So, yeah, you know, you, you yeah. touched on some really beautiful points there, LS. First things first. Um, let's talk about the business model for a second, right? Sure. That, the whole, that whole thing. You're absolutely, you're, you're spot on in the sense that one coaching session yeah. is not going to make a meaningful difference in someone's journey. Right. True. In reality, in order to actually get results, if someone wants to streamline their journey, they mm -hmm. need many. Yeah. They need many coaching sessions. Hence why the way my, I don't know if you know, my, the way my program is structured, 
is that it's considerably cheaper than anyone else. It's actually $30 US and you get at minimum two sessions a month. Mm -hmm. And you have you have access to ask me questions and post clips 24 seven. We have other coaches in the program doing coaches every single day. Multiple, we have, I think we have at least four or five coaching sessions done every day of the week. And the reason I structured it this way is so people can get multiple sessions. So they don't have to spend $80 US every single um, second week to get a review. Because it's not financially it's not financially viable. So right. you're absolutely spot on, LS. It, it is. Yes. It, but in my mind, it has to be like that. Because what's the alternative? The alternative is that, okay, um, uh, hey, buddy, go play Annie. It will teach you all these things about the game. And don't worry, you'll get there in the end. In my experience, that actually doesn't actually work. It doesn't happen. And so mm -hmm. what happens when it comes to personal training in the gym, right? The average person when it comes to the gym, okay, well, why do they fail the gym? Well, they, they go once, they get demoralized, and they um, they give up. Well, what, what, what do we do? Well, personal training is a massive industry because one of the biggest reasons is not even because of the training plans. That's obviously one part of it. It's actually the motivation to go to the gym. And so you may say, well, isn't that just me? Doesn't that just make the business model scammy when it comes to personal trainers? Well, you could argue that maybe there's an element of it that, that they want you to come back so they can make they want you to fail, yeah, make more money. But at the same time, it does it. They do it because it works. You're solving a problem for that client. Now, if someone doesn't want, they only want to get one coaching session and then they want to uh, leave, they pay thirty dollars and then they're done. That's fine as well. But realistically, right. it's just the personal choice. I, I just, I would, I don't, I think that um, the way I, the way I teach is not really necessarily sure. to make more money. It's because it's, there is no other way. I don't really believe there is any other way. Now for some, the people that get one coaching session and skyrocket from, from silver to platinum, those people probably never needed coaching anyway. They were probably talented or had a gaming experience and gaming backgrounds, maybe like Ludwig, whatever whereby they're going to get there anyway. So they're, they're not even the people that I'm even trying to help. I'm trying to help the people that need help. It's sure. going to take, they otherwise would have been in silver for four years. And so I'm going to help them go from silver to emerald within mm -hmm. the space of a year, and whether it's like a year or a year and a half or whatever the hell it might be. Well, okay. Uh, well, no, it has nothing to do with like a debate. I, I don't think it should ever take that long to get to emerald. Um, yeah. So that was just a random silver, thought. Silver to emerald in one year. Yeah, I that's, think that's a long that's, time. I don't think that's a long time at all. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's like a debate. Thing. I, I, I just think that's a long time. Um, I, I would, like, yeah. I mean, I, I have. I would have my own like independent thoughts on that. Uh, that there's there's more right. at play there. Um, and and this is yeah. this is where I think LS. Yeah. And, and and I don't mean this personally at all. And I and I just want to. Actually, I wanted to say this in a different way. Alice, you're very, very smart at the game. And you've done a lot for the league community. And there are concepts that you developed and ways that you've thought about the game that no one else has. And I think a large portion of the league community is indebted to you. Because what, have you, what you've contributed to the game is insurmountable. But at the same time, like mm -hmm. you've been mentioning, your specialty is serving the 2%. You're very yeah. good at teaching pro level play. Mm -hmm. My 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 problem with I think this conversation is that I think you're very detached from reality in terms of the average league player's experience. And I think you fail to empathize and understand what the average league player journey is like. And so in your mind, having worked with some of the best players in the world and you know, being an amazing league player yourself and StarCraft player and all this amazing achievements, you don't, you, you struggle to even begin to empathize what the average silver player or gold player or platinum player or whatever is like. And I think that um, that's, that's kind of by design. That's like just inbuilt in with your worldview. And I don't, I'm not saying that as a critique. I just think that's the reality of your situation because of the people that you surround yourself with and your experiences and what you're passionate about. So that's why I think we have our differences is because sure. um, I've spent a lot of time actually trying to empathize and understand. I was the same. Sure. Look, I can't say I'm exactly the same as you. You're, you're, you're obviously very elite in what your experiences are, but, but, in, but in my experience, I, I you know, uh, pretty high level play myself. 
it took me about a year and a half solid of actually working with lower level players to even begin to wrap my head around how could you possibly be, be in silver? I had to ask myself that. I literally had to ask myself, how could someone actually be in silver? And that took me about a year and a half to even understand that. And, and, and it took me, the reason it took so long specifically, and this is how I developed my whole philosophy about the mental stack, is sure. because the mental stack is what makes League hard. It's the, the League is not a hard game strategically. League is a hard game execution-based. The execution of League is what makes it hard. So that's where I think our differences lie, LS. That's kind of what I'm, the vibe I'm getting okay. as well. And okay. what do you think that's fair? Do you think that's a fair assessment or no? Um, well, I, I don't know how to tap. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that I, I don't engage with Lower Mamar as much anymore, right? Um, I guess my, my only like recent experiences was like last, uh, you know, last winter or whatever, right? My, uh, one of my editors was silver on Korea and he got to diamond in like two months. Um, and he was permanently that's, silver. By the way, that's, that's a, that's, I know that's a, that's like freak lip. That's like, sure, sure, sure. Uh, but I mean, I was coaching really him on, level. right. I, under, I understand it's like an outlier, but I used to have experiences like that all the time back when I was public coaching. That's why I, I hold the conviction that like, and again, I was coaching the editor. Sure. Um, and he was, you know, playing on Korea. Um, and I remember posting about this publicly, like his, his meteoric, like OPGG graph. Um, but I used to have those experiences all the time. That's why I struggle with, um, I don't think that it should take this long to get uh, from point A to point B, unless there's something else at play. Um, so I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing uh, with, with your experiences, uh, with people that you're coaching and, and whatever else. I'm just like, I'm struggling to um, grasp it just because it doesn't reflect my old experiences. And the few experiences that I've had recently um didn't reflect that either like not just my editor but a couple of other like miscellaneous uh friends right. that got into league in the last like year um so that's where i struggle there uh i think that you are right that i do mostly just care about the two percent um for the most part um but i i would say that i also think it's unfair if people take short form content of me and try to apply it to long form beliefs um because it's not as uh, broken down, discussed, uh, or whatever else. And I think that people should have enough wherewithal to acknowledge that I'm like chronically online and many things are well-documented and other types of stuff um, to where it should at least cause a pause. Um, you know? Uh, I mean, that, that, that's my thought on that. Yeah. And, um, and, I, um, and I, I, I don't, I don't want to... I want to um, make it clear... You know, I yep. literally, I don't know if you saw the whole context of the, the, the my podcast episode. Sure. You know, I don't know what you saw. I saw the I two didn't... segments that were about me. Right. That, uh, just that, yeah. At the end of the day, um, yeah. we, di we didn't just target that out. There was context around that as sure. well, right? There was the 10 CS minute. And, and I think to be fair, you've been very vocal about the whole 10 CS minute more than one occasion right i mean right. it's been something that you have mentioned for quite a long time um so but look i i, I get that i yeah. totally get that i mean i've been taken out of context a trillion times i still am to this day and you would of course of course it's content creation yep 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 if you're in if you're in the public sphere and people watch your shit people are going to take you out of context and and i and i empathize with that and yeah i apologize if you felt as though i attacked you and i no. don't mean to that's the not only what i meant the only the only thing I felt like maybe it was an attack was when uh you accused me of rhetoric essentially. Um what do you mean by that? that sorry? Um you made a claim that because of the conviction I think and again I think this is almost verbatim um that I speak with such conviction um that people can't disagree with me um or they just inherently believe it. But then my response to that would obviously be like, I've been doing the World's Coast streams now for five weeks for, you know, whatever. And many of my frequent pro player guests, LEC, especially Crownshot, Trimby, uh, two of the best players in their roles in their region, um, they're frequently commented on and like shorts, TikTok, YouTube, etc. because of the amount that they disagree. Um, and so I think that that's not true. Uh, I think... Part of how I talk with maybe uh, my tonality and stuff might be attributed to like autism, um, 
where I can just have the same tone almost no matter what I'm saying. Um, I think that could maybe be a possibility. I think the conviction is because generally I do think what I'm saying is correct based on my current understanding, but that I'm also someone that has consistently displayed variable change. Uh, it, it's, it's my fundamental philosophy. So when you also said um, my view of the game or my, my outlook of the game, I don't know what you interpret as my view of the game. In fact, that's always a question that I ask on like Twitter and stuff when, when people tell me what my view of the game is or my, my draft philosophy, etc. Um, we only have fucking eight minutes. I'm so sorry. Um, but I was going to ask, like, what, what do you think my view of the game is? Because you cited it in the podcast, but then the claim of rhetoric and, you know, the way that I speak with conviction. Um, that was the only part that I thought was maybe attacking. Yeah, I agree. Actually, in yeah. hindsight, I don't think I would retract. I, I don't think I. I don't really like what I said there. That's actually one aspect of the whole podcast that I don't really. And I'll, you know, I'm going to say it outright. I'm not going to sit here and and say that I. Um, I'm not going to. Um, but it does its job to... because it got your viewers to come to my socials to demand a conversation. And I don't as think someone that's that it. I think it was the ten cs per minute thing. It was the ten cs per minute thing that everyone wanted to me to talk to you about from what i understand sure 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 but i don't think they go right. out of their way if you don't make a spectacle of it with those right. types of phrases um and that that's honest. something that i always talked about uh yeah when i when i grew as much as i did in like 2020 spectacle yeah, no, totally hyperbole yeah, yeah no, ahead, I, I, I don't i think what i did there is i imposed a personal um and a personal thing uh rather than that was like the one thing that i feel like i went too far and i want to just speak very transparently i think the sure. reason um i felt like that in that moment because i get when i do podcasts i'm an idiot i'm i'm like we're two idiots two aussies sitting on bloody two armchairs we're, we're two idiots <laughs> i get pretty emotional and pretty into it sure. right and when you get when you're very passionate about something it's very easy to say things that you don't maybe you get caught up in the moment right yeah. and if i'm going to speak very transparently i think the reason that came out in that moment is because, and I don't know if you know if you remember this, um, you actually watched one of my videos on your Twitch stream ages ago, about maybe it was, it was in 2020 or 2021. Was it with Nemesis and, when we were doing reviews? Yeah, it was with Nemesis. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. And, and I don't think I was portrayed fairly. Mm -hmm. And when I tried to reach out to actually talk about me and talk about my, sure. um, my content, I never got any response. Mm -hmm. and and i reached out multiple times i tried to anyway where and i've had many people cr cr be critical of my content and when i reach out to say hey man do you want to discuss it there's just silence and so um can i ask you where you tried now, to reach out because i have open dms well, everywhere email email and i believe a twitter dm but i think it was an email so i think i think two emails over time okay over two email. um but yeah i got you know radio silence and um and i remember by the way and the reason i remember this specifically and look i don't blame you it is it, content creation is content creation clicks clicks whatever and and i know you probably didn't mean it personally but the reason i did actually remember that is because i was someone that was getting into content anything. creation and i was sure. actually really trying to find my identity as a youtube content creator and give value sure. to people now i wouldn't say my content was the best back in 2020 but i think that it was someone as large of an audience you had back in 2020 when I'm a growing up and coming YouTuber, completely discrediting things I said and not giving me a fair, a fair chance wasn't really very, I don't think, kind. And um, was something that I just never really felt was, I don't think I was portrayed fairly. And mm -hmm. I think that, that that's something that I probably held on to. And I've sure. always wanted to talk to you just about the game because I'm like, I love talking to people about the game and getting sure. different philosophies people coming from different backgrounds and i think it's so easy just to dec discredit someone because they might have a different opinion and that's why i was so excited to come on today and talk to you because mm -hmm. i do think we may differ on some things but at the end of the day sure. we both love league of legends well that's fine it's fine <laughs> oh, yeah i don't know about you anymore but i love league of legends <laughs> yeah there you go yeah um and uh and that's what i'm passionate about and yeah. so i just love talking to people who and and whether or not you still are i mean i'm assuming that you've gone through stages where you were very passionate about league um, yeah and um yeah so that's i guess my, my two cents of that but so i will formally apologize for that particular aspect i don't no, it's totally fine 
apologize yeah. for the tensiest minute thing, but the other stuff, the, the rhetoric thing, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I think I was no, that, that's head. totally fine. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's good. Well, okay, but can... All right, so we only have three minutes, though. What do you think my yeah. view of the game is, though? Because you did cite it. And I, I, every time I, people I, say this, I don't know what it even means. I think yeah. that your view of the game is... I mean, I think, okay, well, it's very hard sure. to, to describe in three minutes, but very quickly. Sure. Um, number one, I'm just going to riff a few things that I think sure, sure, sure. value. I think that you value um, playing the game in, in, a, in a very kind of like... Uh, somewhat kind of like perfect way where it's like you're obsessed with perfection it's like uh you know um and hyper efficiency and everything is done for a particular reason and and it, it it's um i do i think there's like this element i'm probably not articulating correctly but i think there's like an element sure. there of you viewing the game it is very like hyper efficient very like kind of they do this i do this they do this i do this like kind of like um very getting very into the minutia and i love that i agree with that i think that's very important mm -hmm. about the game and i don't disagree with that i think that's one element i think number two you there is an element of like you you kind of want to go against the grain you feel as though people kind of have like i guess whether you i i don't i'm not saying you've said this out loud but i i think you intuitively realize that there's a lot of like herd mentality and people yes. blindly follow the way yes. the game is played from other players and they don't actually yep. think about creatively or critically about why the game is played a particular right, way. Right, so, right, So particular picks are underutilized for that very reason. And then I'll say, um, number three, I do think you have a bit of a high elo skewed view of the game. Um, like I yes. mentioned before, that is uh, somewhat detached from the average lower level player's experience. I would say they're sure. my three kind of quick summary anyway. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. The The only thing I would maybe take gripe with is, like, uh, the perfection comment, um, because I think that one does get thrown around, especially, like, it still gets thrown around. I, I see it in comments, like, even, like, two days ago, I think, on, like, TikTok or something, where people assume that I think that pro players or high-level players are robots. Um, but my fundamental philosophy, if anyone actually listens to things that I say or advocate for in draft or, you know, plays and stuff, um, is always to lower variance and play with things that allow for more forgiveness um so like in draft you're allowed to play a draft that you can fuck up early game you can fall behind in gold um and you can you know you can do these things wrong and you can still be even or even ahead uh because you drafted correctly if i actually believed that league of legends players should all be perfect and that you know they should do x y and z well then zareth is b1 every game karthus is suddenly just god mode broken um, you know, Callista Cogma, the scripture champions, right? It would be all at the top of all my lists. Um, and I would not make claims like, oh, well, Nidalee is just completely useless because obviously you'd hit every spear. Um, so it, it, it's almost ironic when people make these claims about me, but they can't pause to realize that I seem to detest and dislike all of these high execution perfectionist champs um, because it fundamentally goes against my belief. Um, I think the way that I operate in League is it's all variable change. And I think that that is obviously because of my time as an RTS pro player for uh, nine years. Uh, StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2. Um, so yeah, I, I think everything for me in League is variable change. If you can show me that something I said was wrong is actually wrong, you can demonstrate it, um, that's, that's it. Okay, great. Um, if it comes down to like a feeling type thing, that's where things get muddy. Um, or it's like it can go back and forth into a convo. Um, but yeah, I, I just care about, is this the most correct based on current knowledge and understanding? And if that is the case, then we should opt for this. Um, and if someone comes along and is like, actually, I can show why this is wrong or that's obsolete, I'm all for it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, um, did it make sense? Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, yeah, worlds is <laughs> worlds is starting, but yeah, this was good. No, this was good. This was a really good chat. Thank you for yeah. having me on. I really appreciate it. And, yeah. Um, Do you and, want uh, the the vod? I can have Tov uh cut it and send it to you, because I don't have yeah, vods on that, Twitch because I'm in Korea. That would be great if it, yeah. I'd okay. Really love that. And one day sure. I'd, I'd really um love to have you on our podcast to talk about sure. particular concepts um about the game. So maybe one sure. day we can have you on if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that would be totally fine. That's no problem. Okay.